guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Sister stole our inheritance by forging documents, we got revenge and sent her to jail. My and my three siblings were raised by our grandparents. When I was 15 my grandfather passed away and we were left with just our grandmother. My sister is three years older than me while both of my brothers were younger. My sister always had the mentality that since she was the oldest it entitled her to certain things. Her and I are in our 30s while my brothers are both still in their 20s. All of us though are legal adults at this point. Last year grandma passed away and we were left with only each other. You would think that in a time like that all of us would want to be united and be together. For three of us that was true, but not for our sister. Grandma had always told us in advance what would happen when she passed away. She always wanted to take care of us and had left us all a decent inheritance. A small sum of money for each of us, and the land and house would be split evenly. Nobody would get more than anybody else. One person's portion of the home and land would easily be over $100,000. The house alone was amazing and felt almost like a mini mansion to us with many things still being from the original build. When it came time to read her will we were all shocked to see that it said she left everything to sister. We all knew that something fishy was going on but didn't want to get into it while we were mourning the death of grandma. For us the idea of arguing over inheritance and money just after she died would be the lowest class thing and wouldn't make her proud. We knew that it was wrong though and spent a good amount of time trying to find the real will and see what was actually going on. While we didn't find anything in the house, we were able to find papers that had her lawyer's name and phone number. Sister saw we were snooping and quickly kicked us out of her house. When we tried to talk to her about how grandma said we would each be getting something she just laughed at us. She said that grandma was just saying that because she didn't want us to feel bad that she left the eldest everything. Then she changed the story when she told my youngest brother that he was too young and probably heard wrong. She was clearly lying to her only remaining family just to get the money. I called up the lawyer who was surprised to hear that she even passed away. I found out really fast that he wasn't the same lawyer that was reading out the will. In fact, he said that he had the copy of the will and was willing to send it to us and do whatever he needed to on his end to make it official. I don't really know if he was doing things a typical lawyer did or if he was just helping us because we didn't know what we were doing. Either way major shout out to this guy for helping us get things settled. If anyone is curious who the lawyer was that read the fake will, it was someone else that got wrapped up in my sister's lies. It turns out that her fake will was forged so it looked totally legitimate. Our only option was to take our sister to court and contest her will. Although we were all reluctant to do so we ended up going through with it because we knew that grandma would want us to all have what she left us. This isn't even including possessions of hers and even grandpas that my sister was keeping for herself. We weren't even being allowed to take anything to remember the people that raised us by. Her selfishness was out of control, and we had to do something about it. So, we ended up going to court for the money and house. We all told the judge what we were told by our grandmother growing up while my sister spouted yet another fake story. The good news for us is that she had a bad forgery job done and none of the signatures of her paperwork matched up. I have no idea why this wasn't checked in the first place, but let's just move forward. Our lawyer was able to completely destroy her case and get us back what was rightfully ours. I know that you all really came here though to find out what the fate of my sister was. I won't keep you in anticipation any longer for that one. It turns out that she had actually spent all of the inheritance money trying to gamble it away. So that was basically gone, and she was charged with grand theft since it was now considered stolen. She couldn't sell anything to get the money back either because instead of spending it of tangible things, it was just gone. The house on the other hand was fair game along with the land. We ended up getting full possession since she was now going to jail for the theft. While we could have sold it and easily gotten our money back, we couldn't bring ourselves to do that. All of us had other homes, but we decided that we would split the house and land equally among us. The forgery was another story altogether though. Turns out that in our state it was a huge problem at some point, and they had to make the laws even more strict regarding it. 
In the past a first-time offender might have been given a slap on the wrist or a hefty fine. Now though it was pretty much a guaranteed two to five years in jail. Putting it together with her other charge though they gave her the maximum of five years for that. Both wouldn't be served together either, so the years got added onto what she got for the theft. You think that would be enough for any person, but they dug into her life and found that she had been using credit cards that she also got through forgery and lies. When it came to this revenge it seemed that when it rained it poured. Now you might be thinking we felt pretty good at the end of the day from what happened. To be honest though, we didn't. We ended up losing another family member in my sister and now it was just the three of us left. She was horrible and deserved what she had gotten, but that didn't mean we had to feel good about it. We went back to the house and looked at how much of the things we grew up seeing every day were just gone. She had a field day selling off grandma's fur coats and jewelry. She even sold off their wedding rings. Grandpa's watch was also gone. Tons of memories remained but we all felt sick that she seemed to have no feelings for anything except the money that we were left. The land the house was on was honestly way too large for us to maintain and we agreed to sell off half of the land that was just empty space. We split that money evenly three ways and used it to help go to places that we found receipts for the stuff she sold them. At the end we only managed to buy back a few of the things, but for us that was the closure we needed. I don't know what's going to happen when she gets out of jail, but I hope she stays far away. The next story is titled. Parents wrongfully accused of switching drivers after accident caused by another driver. Halifax, Canada. Last December, I was in the car with my parents when a young woman pulled out across traffic in front of us. Due to how close the car was, we couldn't stop but were able to slow enough that there were no injuries. It was all pretty cut and dry, the other driver's insurance was covering everything as she was clearly at fault. Nine days later, my parents were served with charges stating that the other driver had changed her statement, indicating that my father was driving and that my parents had switched sides of the car before the police got there. My father lost his license in 2002 and has not been behind the wheel of a car since, as due to medical issues his reaction time and eyesight are such that he would not be safely able to drive. They set two separate court dates, one today for my mom, for falsifying insurance documents and giving a false statement to police none of which happened, and in a few weeks we go back for my dad for traffic violations and driving without a license and insurance, which he didn't do. The other driver was already charged with failure to yield an unsafe operation of a vehicle. I was in the vehicle but my statement was not taken at any point, but I do have to testify in court. I've written down my account of the accident but I am petrified that my parents will be found guilty for something they didn't do. Their financial situation is such that they would never be able to pay these fines and their legal aid lawyer has given them incorrect advice several times now, told my mother to send the prosecutor documents, which the prosecutor told her that's a bad idea because they are prosecuting her, not the other driver. It's he said, she said at this point, and she won't have any proof as it didn't happen, but I'm still super stressed about it and worried my anxiety will make it look like I'm lying. Any tips for how to deal with this? Edit. So the judge completely took the other driver's word for everything, despite her laughing and giggling on the stand and refusing to swear an oath to tell the truth, and did not even let us speak. My dad has a cognitive deficit and stuttered in his testimony, so the judge said he must have been lying about not driving. My brother has now called on some professional contacts and the appeal process is rolling with proper legal counsel. Thanks for your advice, folks, but this judge seemed to decide before my dad was even put on the stand that he was guilty. Update. Dad's retrial was tonight. My folks lawyered up and dad was not put on the stand due to his cognitive capacity. My mother, myself and a neighbor all testified and after four hours in a courtroom, the new judge determined dad was not guilty. The judge said that while she did not question that the other driver truly believed my dad was the driver, she felt that we were also credible and believable and that somewhere along the line the other driver got the details mixed up in her head. She believed mine and my mother's testimony that there was no way we would ever get in a car with my dad driving and that my dad was never behind the wheel. As the court has determined my dad was not driving, there is no grounds for my mother to be charged with giving a false statement, so that will likely be dropped. Thanks for the advice last year, it has been a rough go but it's turned out how we hoped it would, albeit a bit more expensively. The next story is titled. Parked a rental car in a handicapped spot. Will I wake up to a ticket slash tow? Florida. Backstory, I am in a new city and rented a car. 
booked a hotel and drove there to crash for the night. Get there and find shipping containers all over the parking lot. As I back out to go to park in a vacant lot next door, the front desk person comes out and tells me it's okay. Park in the handicap spot, they are not handicapped during the construction. But there's a giant handicap only marking on the ground and signage still exist warning of financial penalties, no tow though. In my state even if there is construction or it's your own property or whatever other excuse you can make, it's still illegal and a ticket able offense. Is this the case in Florida? What recourse will I have if I am ticketed overnight? I plan to move the car first thing before the sun comes up, but is there anything else I can do short of moving my car to protect myself? I know I should just move the car but I'm tired as duck. Update. Turns out the hotel is part of a private road, so police do not normally patrol. In the morning, I awoke to three cars parked next to me in the one other handicap space. I simply backed my car into another spot and went to enjoy a shitty microwave hot dog breakfast. The hotel was obviously violating ADA in other ways during this renovation, so I simply suggested they throw a tarp over the signs and temporarily repaint the pavement so they themselves don't catch a charge. Either way, a thank you to the one guy who gave me advice and a good luck to the rest of you posing as lawyers. This sub is a valuable resource for the Reddit community. The last story is titled. My landlord is taking advantage of me and might harass me when I get back home from work. Hello guys, I am seeking your guys help with my current situation because I really don't know how to deal with it. I feel like the woman I rented from is taking advantage so I'm going to jump right into it. It's going to be long, but I need you guys to know everything in order to help me. I am a university student who was seeking for a short term rental, September to December, in Toronto for the fall term. My landlord, now, then reached out to me for a room available that she will be renting out and I can come check it out. The apartment was really good and was in a good location, I loved the room, and she was renting it for cheap about $950 per month. My boyfriend and I really liked her personality and we both were there for 3 hours having a conversation. During which she complained about her current tenant being disrespectful and that she's going to drive her out by testing her limits because that way I can still keep my money, which she successfully did. I didn't think of it as much, just some major tea spilling and told her to send me the contract soon. Since my lease started on September, she rented her place out for a month to another tenant and complained about her as well and told me she would drive her out as well. The contract was a room rental agreement and I read it over and signed it. I'll be attaching the contract. When I first moved in, it was good we got along really well, and I got to know her on a personal level. She is unemployed, always in the house. Every day she vents about her life to me for hours and I would just listen. She vents about her son not calling her, her being 500 pounds, etc. It was emotionally draining. In conversations she would keep mentioning that she charges me less and that I should feel lucky that I'm paying less rent for downtown Toronto. She also keeps mentioning how she's not strict with me as much as she was with her previous tenants. One day she mentioned she had sleep problem and I told her that maybe it was because majority of her time was spent indoors and that causes her to not get tired in the end of the day. She got really offended and attacked my age and lack of life experience basically saying that I don't know crap, it was really offensive. I did apologize numerous for offending her though. I told her that from now on we should keep it professional, and she said professional? I'll show you professional and said that she will be giving me a list of rules that she gives to guests who stay over through Airbnb, which I am not. Because she never leaves the house, she told me that I don't require that access pass to get into the apartment building and that she will buzz me in every time but just a few days ago when I was returning after a wonderful weekend I was waiting for a long time because she wouldn't answer her phone. She did mention on the first day when we were cool that I could take the card and she can always buzz herself in. She would only need it when she had to do laundry. Since she already did her laundry and I having access is my right, I took the key and let her know that I did and the reason why, even mentioning the time she didn't answer her phone. She said that I have no right to take the pass and that I need to pay a deposit to get the pass, which isn't mentioned in the contract. She also got mad at me for turning the TV off because she said I have no right to do so. She wasn't home, and it was blasting music. She also condescends me for having a job saying that it's not hard work right when I told her it's a senior level job and told me that anyone can do that. I need as much advice I can get before I head home and discuss things with her and she'll speak her truth. Edit. She also said that I had some nerve when I texted her about the access pass. Update. 
She has given me an eviction notice because she doesn't like me anymore and is threatening to call the police. She said I don't fall under any tenement rules and that I have no rights. Help. Update 2. Landlord might kick me out. In my old post I was worried because I did not have access to the building. My landlord said that I can take the pass occasionally so today I did and went to the building manager to get a new one. He found out that her pass isn't hers and suspended hers and gave mine for free. Landlord said I need to pay deposit. When I told her that she got really mad and gave me a notice of eviction right away for a month and telling me that if I disrespect her that she'll evict me right away and call the police. I stayed in the living room and kept asking her what why and she said, because I don't like you anymore and you have no rights, get your crap or I'll throw you and your stuff off the balcony. Since this was a threat and I got everything on recording I then called the police and went downstairs to wait for them. During that time, she cancelled all my access and evicted me so I couldn't come back and get my stuff. The police were being the police and never showed because it was a non-emergency. That was at 6pm and it's 6am and still nothing. I am currently staying at a friend's places whose parents said will help me out. I have gotten no sleep at all. I am tired, physically, and emotionally. I miss my parents, they are all the way in the Middle East and I'm in Toronto. I have rights. It's a room rental with a shared kitchen and bathroom so I don't really fall under the extensive rules, but I still have rights. I feel violated. I don't know what to do. I want my money back. All my passport and my documentation are still in the room. Edit. I am seriously overwhelmed by the amount of people who stepped up to help, even my manager. I have had so many people offer me a place. I informed my university since I'm an international student and I am in Canada under them. They fired up y'all like they be going on emergency, love it. I took your guy's advice and went to police station. Cried a little, you know some waterworks for the drama and they called the dispatch right away. The police bust down her door and she started arguing, naked, like the prime boomer she is meanwhile I got my stuff. Currently staying at a friend's place and will be looking for a place soon. What is my life? I better become rich as duck with the crap I go through. Thanks for listening.